everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel in case you're new here I'm Steph I'm the average artist and today we are painting over the giver um, side note I paint over book movie covers because I don't like book movie covers on books it cheapens the book for me but I do appreciate that some people won't like this so if you don't like this then just uh, just leave because it's gonna get worse from here. So The Giver is the book that I will be doing today. Probably a lot of you or a few of you have had to read this in school or in the past and uh, yeah I read this and I quite enjoyed it but we'll get into that as I paint. Today I will be using this jelly gouache that I ordered and used some time ago. 48 pieces of paint in this box and I haven't used them in a long time and I'm gonna see if they've dried out or not. Ew the moldy. Okay, I'm going to be entirely honest with you guys, I haven't used these paints for a long time and they were kind of sat in the corner and the lid didn't quite fit on the side of them. So as you can see, some of these paints have gotten slightly mouldy, which is pretty disgusting. Um, I didn't really look at these paints so I didn't know like that they were going bad, but to be honest there's only a few casualties, this one being the worst. So I'm going to throw away <laughs> the mouldy paint, there's a sentence I never thought I would say and use the rest because the rest kind of look okay and we have lots of colours to be able to use so in the end we have five casu six casualties and they are looking pretty disgusting but hey let's use these other jelly paints and uh okay there's another one here um and get on with it because i don't want to rest waste the rest so let's see how we how we go Absolutely rank. I didn't know. I didn't realise the lid was slightly off. I just want to assure you guys that that is only because I didn't shut the lid properly or the lid was came a little bit broken because I remember in the video I said that the lid for these didn't quite fit on. So that's why they got a bit mouldy but the other paints, jelly paints are fine. They don't really, um, I've never seen that reaction before so <laughs> bit of an odd one. So I got this really cool book of colour combinations for Christmas and I thought it'd be really interesting to try it out for this painting and I flicked through the book and it just shows you like lots of different colours that would work well together and I came across this one which I think is totally out of my comfort zone so I really wanted to try that to just get better at doing different colours and tones and stuff so I'm going to pick out those colours from this pack and try and mix them together as best I can to make the colours that I want and we're gonna paint, we're using those. So here is my color palette. I've got black, Medici blue, dark Medici blue, yellow green, coral red, brick red, and color mine blue, sort of. I mean, I tried to recreate the ones that I could, and then I added a uh, white in there and a yellow because I want to do the underpainting in yellow, and then I sort of made what I could out of the colors that I had to match what was on the page but yeah i think this is a nice palette and there's no purple so i think hopefully it should be fine i still cannot believe the state of those paints please don't at me in the comments i'm so sorry no one is madder or sadder about this situation than me so leave me alone please <laughs> you can tell i have the youtube fear I want to talk a little bit about the book The Giver to further explain why I've picked this composition and the overall like design of the book cover and this subject matter that I've picked. So The Giver is a young adult dystopian novel by Lewis Lowry. Lois Lowry? Not sure. And it at first appears to be like a utopian but then it's kind of revealed slowly without the book that it is a dystopian and it follows a young boy named Jonas who 
is living his life, you know, his loving life, and it's kind of like they live in this society where everything, like all your memories and emotional pain is just not non-existent. They live in like this bubble of happiness, basically, and sameness. Later on, we find out that each person, as they turn 13, they receive a job. So Jonas receives this job of becoming the receiver of memory. So he visits this old man who becomes the giver and he then gets memories from this old man and he realises what pain is, what joy is, um, memories of snow, memories of war, like all these different things just come to him and he realises that the society he lives in is wrong. But they don't know that it's wrong because they don't have the memories or the wisdom to see what's in front of their eyes so they kind of live in this world of just pure state of being and then Jonas realizes that he wants to change it. This book is probably a really important book to a lot of people I know a lot of people probably studied it in school I never studied this I probably read of Mice and Men or something and then yeah I think it's it's a really good book I like the ending as it is but actually it's a quartet and I think I might read the rest of them just to find out what happens but as a standalone novel it's a really good story and I think it really says a lot of things if I think it it starts a good conversation about maybe looking into our own society and questioning whether that is morally right the way that we live and I think it kind of speaks to that a little bit. I thought it was a good story overall and I enjoyed reading it. I think it was interesting. Although I've read a few young adult dystopian fantasies by now, so it wasn't anything groundbreaking for me, but I think at the time it was a little bit, it was very different to other things that had been written. In the book, Jonas and everybody in their community ride bikes, so I thought what I would do is signify that with a bike that had been abandoned and at first it looks like it could be just laying there but as you look further it's kind of crumpled and abandoned and left to rot basically. This is also an indication of something that might happen in the books. I'm not going to spoil it but if you've read it then maybe you know what I'm indicating here but yeah I really think that this signifies the book, the story for me in a way that doesn't spoil anything and maybe when people read it they can be like oh yeah that may that I can see why the illustrator chose to paint a bike on the front of this cover. I wanted to keep the style of the illustration super loose and I think I achieved that. I did a little of like blocking out of colour and then I wanted to keep like movement within it to kind of signify the panic or the rush of emotions that Jonas might suddenly feel and I think it works really nicely. I want people to look at it and then maybe look closer or just at first glance think it's just a bike in the forest and then as they look more they see that actually it's um, it's been abandoned and stuff. I think it was really fun to paint. I really enjoyed this process. I, th I think this is probably one of the first times I haven't really included a person on my book paint over covers? I think so. Um, actually maybe the Goosebumps one is the other one that I didn't include a person and I think it's just um, all the better for it. I really like the process of this and I think it looks really cool. I really am glad as well that I stuck to this colour palette and didn't try to add like purple which is within my comfort zone. I really went out of the box with this one and went with the oranges and like really light greens which I would never touch. Usually I would hate to like paint something with light green and orange and the yellow underpainting is just something that I wouldn't necessarily do. So I'm really glad because I think it looks really cool. Um, it's shown me that okay maybe I can do stuff without relying on that like the colours that I usually prefer to use and I know there's nothing wrong with having a certain colour scheme or using a colour scheme that you like a lot, I know that, but it's just within my own like development, I want to branch out a bit and just, you know, do something a little bit different for once. And uh, yeah, I think that I achieved that. What do you guys think? I think this might be one of my favourite book covers that I've ever done. 
and uh, that's saying a lot because I, I do really tend to like what I accomplish with the book covers because I think that I really plan them out carefully because I know that I'm going to be painting on a book. I want to be really careful with it. So yeah, I'm really proud of this piece and it took ages to get all the details right. I do think I could have spent a little bit more time on the top part, but I also like the way that it does look a little bit abstract and it could be up to interpretation. I really like that the bike is super detailed and then around it, it slowly gets more and more like abstract and not within a certain like strict style i i think that works a little bit but also maybe i could have spent longer on it i'm getting this like feeling that i am not really spending long time on each piece that i do because obviously i have to film it for youtube so i'm getting into this um state of doing things rather quicker than i should do maybe so i'm starting to think about that and how i can improve upon that I'm thinking maybe a future video of like a long form of painting, maybe I'd spend a week on one painting or something as a YouTube video. I think that would be really good to see what I could create with a longer period of time because I think I did this in a few hours and if I can do this in a few hours then maybe I can do even better in more hours or would it be the opposite? Would it be like I've overworked something because I've had more time on it? I don't know, I need to find out and I think that would be a cool video but we'll see, I don't know if I have the time yet. <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about doing more vlogs and uh, different things like that. It's been really interesting uh, but it's kind of hard to make a vlog about lockdown. We are in another lockdown which is not great but you know we're safe at home so that's fine. Yeah, we're coming to the end of this piece. I'm just doing a lot of different final touches and details and that's it. Okay, that is the final look of the book cover. I really like it in the end. I'm glad that I went outside my comfort zone to try this color scheme and I think it really works nicely for the style of book and everything that I said in my voiceover. I'm really pleased with this one. I definitely think it looks better than the original cover, in my opinion, you know, so this is my book, so I'm pretty pleased with it. If you guys would like to join my book club, we have a book club over on my Patreon. We read a book a month and we discuss it and we try to make art from it and all different things. I also have a print and sticker option, so go that check that out. The link is in the description. I'd like to thank my patrons. They are Alex, Elera, Ava, Hannah, Heidi, Jordan, Lamon, Lucille, Luke, Luzernia, Megaya, Steph, Ace Tubulum, Erica, Jacqueline, Tim and Charlotte, Chelsea, Matthew, um, Susan. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Please uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more content and I will see you next time. Bye!